It's the moment millions of Algerians had been demanding. In a rare public appearance, a frail-looking Abdelaziz Bouteflika handed over his resignation letter to the head of the Constitutional Council, ending his 20-year rule as president of Algeria. His statement was read on state television. The 82-year-old said this decision is triggered by my eagerness to prevent that verbal excesses that unintentionally mark the situation turn into potentially dangerous drifts. The resignation came shortly after the country's army chief warned of immediate action to remove the president from office. Once again, we emphasize that our effort to solve this crisis is based on our allegiance to the country, and we are confident that the people can overcome any crisis. We also believe that individuals will vanish, but the country will remain forever. News of the resignation turned weeks of protests into celebrations. We won the battle, but we still have to win the war. There's still a lot of work to do. Fossils of new human species discovered in Philippines cave. Fossilized bones and teeth suggest a long-lost cousin that scientists dubbed Homo luzonensis. Fossil bones and teeth found in the Philippines have revealed a long-lost cousin of modern people, which evidently lived around the time our own species was spreading from Africa to occupy the rest of the world. It's yet another reminder that, although Homo sapiens are now the only surviving members of our branch of the evolutionary tree, we've had company for most of our existence. Through the astronomers captured the first ever image of a black hole. It's one of the most mysterious objects in the universe. And Matt Gutman is in Los Angeles with the discovery made 55 million light, light years away. Good morning, Matt. Far, far away. Good morning, Michael. Scientists have theorized for over a century that black holes have existed, but it wasn't until this team figured out a way to see the unseeable, because black holes trap all light, that we got this iconic glimpse of the most destructive force in the universe. It's arguably the most famous donut hole of all time. That first image of a black hole. I never believed that this black hole was as big as people said until we saw that. M87 is over 50 million light years away, and that donut is 20 billion miles across. And getting that snapshot wasn't easy. The British police have arrested the founder of the WikiLeaks website, Julian Assange, and removed him from the Ecuadorian embassy in London. The Metropolitan Police say they were invited into the embassy after its government withdrew his asylum status. He's now thought to be en route to a central London police station. He's lived at the embassy since 2012. Well, with me now is our diplomatic correspondent, James Landale. James, welcome to you. You broke this news. What do we know? Well, what we know is that this is the product of a long negotiation between the British government and the Ecuadorian authorities. They have, uh, under the current uh, political leadership uh, in Ecuador, they have become increasingly frustrated by the situation, Mr Assange being kept uh, in their embassy in London uh, for so long. Uh, they've been looking for a way of resolving the solution, uh, resolving the situation. So what happened is that the, the Ecuadorians agreed that they felt that Mr. Assange had breached his asylum conditions. There are lots, of, if you claim asylum, there are lots of rules what you can and cannot do. You cannot, for example, engage in political activity and things like that. So they were formally withdrew his asylum. That, uh, and they, then they invited the British police onto Ecuadorian soil, namely their embassy, which allowed the British police to arrest Mr. Assange for breaching bail, this officially known as failing to surrender to the court. This dates back to the original uh, allegations when there were extradition hearings. The United States wanted Mr. Assange extradited to the United States where he could um, face questioning for the, 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 the release of all that information through what we now call WikiLeaks. Um, obviously, by going into entering the Ecuadorian embassy, he breached those bail conditions. So what's going to happen now is um, he's being taken to a central London police station uh, and the police say that he will be presented before Westminster Magistrates Court as soon as is possible. Remind Residential areas in the Libyan capital targeted by indiscriminate shelling. The UN-backed government says forces loyal to the warlord Khalifa Haftar are attacking the city in reaction to their defeat in the west of the country. People in the coastal city of Sabrata cheering the liberation of the city by the government forces. 
Other nearby cities, including Sarman and Jilat, have been also recaptured by the government forces. Haftar's forces, who controlled those cities for the past three years, were driven out in 24 hours after heavy fighting. The swift takeover of those cities sees government forces changing their strategy from defensive to offensive mood. The balance has shifted. Turkish drones and Turkish aerial support and Turkish training has helped the GNA and now they've re reached parity or maybe even supremacy in the air and they are undercutting the LNA supply lines on all directions. Sabrata, about 80 kilometers west of Tripoli, is a key city. Whoever controls it can move on many other cities in the west. It also makes gaining control of the international coastal highway easier, a key link between Tripoli and the Tunisian border. Government forces say other anti-Hafter Amazigh forces can now link up with them. The United Nations has been calling on the warring sides to stop fighting and focus on responding to a rising number of COVID-19 infections. A building that has been a symbol of France itself for 900 years, but much more than that, a building of such beauty and renown that it truly belongs to the world. Notre Dame de Paris, flames leaping from the ancient timbers in its roof, raging out of control, threatening the entire structure. And in every corner of the world, people watching on multiple live feeds, many weeping as they watch. It appears to have started in a roof space during a restoration project. Notre Dame on fire said a thousand messages on social media as the first pillar of smoke rose into a clear Parisian evening. The flames soon made it quite clear just how serious this was. On the streets of the Ile de la Cité, crowds gathered and watched in near silence. This was incomprehensible. What was there to say? Within minutes, it was clear this was out of control. Flames spreading from the roof timbers to the spire, the flesh that stands above the cathedral transept. Restored in the 19th century with oak covered in lead, it was swiftly consumed. A tiny piece of what's claimed to be the original crown of thorns had been embedded in it. With the falling roof, countless treasures below are likely to have been lost. Works of art, the great organ, and at least some of the stained glass rose windows that have graced this cathedral since the mid 13th century. Firefighters seem to arrive slowly, though fighting a fire on this scale, this high above the ground, may never have been possible. Threats of more avalanches in the Canadian Rockies are hampering efforts to find three expert mountain climbers presumed dead after vanishing in an avalanche Wednesday. David Begno reports one of the three was an American. Security forces on high alert. The threat of another suspected bomb causing panic in this neighborhood. Officials say they believe a little known Islamist group was behind the carnage on Easter Sunday, but with some kind of link to what a cabinet spokesman called an international network. Suspicion has fallen on Islamic State or Al Qaeda. This was a very sophisticated attack. It was coordinated, multiple locations, synchronized, very sophisticated explosive devices. We're talking about one of the largest terrorist attacks that has taken place since 9-11 and a local outfit that's been known for carrying out stunts like defacing statues cannot suddenly go from that to carrying out one of the biggest attacks we've seen. A document circulating on social media reveals an advance warning was given to the Sri Lankans earlier this month from a foreign intelligence agency of a possible attack on churches. It named the little-known National Tawith Jamaath group, the same local group identified by the authorities today. Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has arrived in Russia this morning ahead of a planned summit tomorrow with President Vladimir Putin. Kim traveled by train to the eastern port city of Vladivostok, and that's where his meeting will take place tomorrow.
Kim's first visit to Russia is widely seen as an effort to drum up support from Putin, while nuclear talks with Washington are in limbo. You remember that summit with U.S. President Donald Trump in Hanoi in February. It ended early and without an agreement. The two sides are seemingly far apart now on how to trade sanctions relief for meaningful steps toward denuclearization. This is one superhero film with a happy ending for its makers, Disney and Marvel. Avengers Endgame will be the biggest movie ever at the box office. $2.79 billion made from worldwide cinema sales make it the highest grossing film in history. On May 1st, explorer Victor Vescovo reached a depth of 10,928 meters to the bottom of what's known as the Challenger Deep. That's at the southern end of the Pacific Ocean's Mariana Trench. It becomes the deepest solo dive in human history. Now for reference, the Mariana Trench is deeper than Mount Everest is tall. Vescovo knocks off director James Cameron for the title, who famously set the record back in 2012. Vescovo's ride? This $40 million titanium submersible called the Limiting Factor. It's just the third submersible to ever even reach what's known as full ocean depth. So what makes the limiting factor so unique? It can make repeated extended dives in a short amount of time. Vescovo did five deep dives in 10 days, all between about 11 and 12 hours each. People will be watching this video with interest because we haven't seen um, Baghdadi since he appeared back in 2014, which was when he gave a, a sermon at the main mosque in Mosul declaring the start of the caliphate. And since then, as you mentioned, there have been multiple reports of his death. Uh, there was a, a very credible report um, a, a few years back that he'd been badly wounded. So um, intelligence analysts, journalists, uh, people who follow uh, this part of the world and this group will be watching and studying in interest what he's saying and the message that he's giving. You, know, you can see him in the picture. He's, he's looking, he doesn't look in, a, in great health. He's got a long gray beard, uh, very different to the figure that he cut back in uh, 2014 when he had a trim black beard. So clearly the past five years have taken their toll on him, not surprisingly. And he has a message uh, to the West. He says that the battle of Islam and its people People against the Crusaders and their followers is a long battle. Uh, it's really um, this sense that while yes, the caliphate, the self-declared caliphate of Islamic State has fallen and it fell last month following US-led efforts um, backing Iraqi and Syrian forces to regain that land that had been taken by IS. He's saying that while it's fallen, his followers will continue to wage this, uh, this war as he sees it. Um, he also says in words that uh, are not actually on camera, but you hear his voice saying that, that the Sri Lanka attacks last Easter Sunday were in response for the fall of Bagus. Now that is the final stronghold, or the final foothold, the tiny patch of land, relatively speaking, in Syria that was the last stretch of territory held by Islamic State until it fell to Western-backed Syrian forces a few weeks ago. He's saying that the, uh, the, 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 you know, his fighters fought bravely, he's claiming, um, and saying that they will avenge the, the, the sort of suffering that they say took place. Now, this video, it must be, uh, it, it must be under, underlined as a propaganda video released by Islamic State's media arm. Uh, it, its veracity can't be independently confirmed, um, but it, it, it looks real. It looks like it's been recently shot, and it does look like what it says it is, Baghdadi appearing for the first time in five years. Tear gas canisters fired into this crowd in Venezuela. Reaction to the country's opposition leader, Juan Guaido, calling for a military uprising. People taking to the streets there for what's being called the final phase in a months long mission to oust socialist leader Nicolas Maduro. Guaido saying today it has been years of sacrifice, persecution, and even years of fear. Today, that fear ends. 
Guaido, who's been recognized by the U.S. and more than 50 other nations as Venezuela's leader, responding to the ongoing unrest, as well as the humanitarian and economic crisis there. After more than 30 years on the throne, Emperor Akihito made a slow final walk into the ceremonial room in the Imperial Palace. As was so often the case throughout his reign, he was accompanied and supported by his wife, Empress Michiko. Akihito then spoke for the last time as Emperor of Japan. It is fortunate that I have been able to perform my duty as Emperor with profound trust in and respect for the Japanese people for 30 years since my ascension to the throne. To the people who accepted and supported me as a symbol, I express my heartfelt thanks. With the day of abdication, we reflect upon the long years over which the Emperor has thoughtfully shared the happiness and sadness of the people of Japan and renew once again the feeling of deep respect and thanks. Among those at the ceremony, the oldest son of Akihito, Crown Prince Naruhito, who on Wednesday will become the 126th Emperor of Japan. That will be his day. This one belonged to Emperor Akihito.